Good evening and welcome to the second governance and policy committee meeting of the 2021-22 school year. Uh, just for a brief introduction in case anyone's watching, I'm Chris Vallon, board trustee and chair of this committee. Laser. I'm just going in a second. Sorry, uh, laser alert network administrator. <laughs> Ashley. Ashley Panetta, board trustee. Tracy Mayors, Tracy Mayors, board trustee. Okay, thank you and welcome everyone. Um, our first order of business is to approve the meeting notes uh, from our last meeting, which are not this one. How do I find it? Oh, Should be in the uh, shared Google Drive. I can uh, make something to go to that. Here we go. Um, yeah. Sorry, I have everything open. I do too. <laughs> nope, maybe I already had it up. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so it's again just the meeting notes from the last meeting where we selected the chair. We developed our charges, which have since been approved by the Board of Education. We discussed our retreat and our next step for confirmation of Dr. Cole's participation um, and discussed student participation at meetings and a few policies, including the public participation policy, which we've since addressed with the full board and public comments. And then just an outline of policies we may or may not cover this year. Do I have a motion to accept the minutes, the notes as taken at the last meeting on October 27th. So moved. moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries, motion passes, thank you. And move that up. I should just close some of these. Okay. So as just mentioned, um, we do have an upcoming board retreat scheduled for, that's supposed to be December 18th. December 18th from 10 to one location. Tracy is at Woodlands Middle High School or is that still to be decided now that we've decided it's a fully closed session? Yeah, I think we just need to leave it where it was. Um, unless you guys have a different recommendation you wanna to present to the board on the 7th. Ashley, any thoughts? I'm fine leaving it where it was. I'm good at Woodlands Middle High School but I probably prefer a a different room. That room felt very open to me. I, I know we want space. So if there's a spacious room that isn't as open to anyone passing by, I'd probably prefer that. Maybe okay. the wise room or I, I'm not sure. That's a, actually, that's a great point. Um, that can be more uh, private, like a door close right. situation. Um, that's a great point. Um, trying to think. <laughs> And the wise room is a great one. We, we use that all the time, right? So that's an option. If we have that, uh, that, that, um, what is it called? That, the partition. That open. Yeah, partition, thank you, opened. And that could probably work really well. A good idea, actually. So yeah, do, do we want to recommend that? Uh, I'm in favor. I'm in favor too. So let's do that then. Okay. All right. And as we just said, you've confirmed at our last board meeting that Dr. Coles will be there as a moderator for our discussion on communications and protocols. And just to reiterate to anyone opening, it is a full board retreat. There is going to be no public business discussed at this meeting, so it will remain closed the whole time. All right, next order of business. Um, Trustee Pineda shared with us a an evaluation tool to review on a very quick basis how we are doing at our meetings to see if we could make improvements or suggestions. And we're just gonna take a look at that. And I thought we could do that line by line. Let's see, of these multiple tabs, this one. Um, it is currently a three page document I would like to boil this down to 
two pages, probably if we shrink some font, it can get down to one page, but something that doesn't look as intimidating as this, even though it is fairly quick to fill out. So is it okay if we just go through item by item to see if this is relevant to, okay. Okay, so, so it's basically this observation sheet can be used individually or by a full board to periodically assess how effectively and efficiently meetings are being prepared and run. It is helpful to attach a copy of the board meeting agenda. Um, and then it lists which board, well, obviously that would be Greenberg Central School District and the meeting date. And we could discuss whether we would want confidential, do we want our names listed as the observer or would we want to just rate it in, uh, anonymously? In my mind, you know, there's only seven of us. Um, you know, I don't think it's a big deal if we know who did it, um, who rated it, which way, because it might be helpful, right? There might be an observation that may not be clear to us and we may need to ask for more information. So, you know, in my opinion, I'm fine with my name being on it if I'm the one checking the boxes. Tracy, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay with it. Um, that not being anonymous. Um, I'm not sure I'm thinking back to maybe a meeting that maybe wasn't so cordial that maybe people felt uh, they wanted to just give feedback without saying who they were. But it's like you said, there's only seven of us. And if anything, we need to be honest with one another. Um, so I'm fine with it not being anonymous. Good point. All right, and then according to this format, it says scoring use a five point scale for each. No, I'm just reading this aloud for purposes of transcription. So I'm not trying to eat up time. <laughs> um, scoring use a five point scale for each item with five, the highest mark and one, the lowest use a zero for unable to tell. Also five indicates the board seems to do this routinely. One indicates the board rarely or never does this. So one is low or rarely or never and high, the high number is five. Okay, so first board members speak loudly and clearly enough so everyone present can hear them. So I'm laughing because Gary Gary there. that's an issue with the mask <laughs> exactly. and the air conditioning <laughs> exactly. or whatever is in the background. Yeah, so I guess, you know, I'm fine with leaving it for, but I, I'm not sure that it's necessary to be honest with you. I, I would suggest we just take it off, uh, considering the fact that we're we're short for real estate. And I, I agree with Trustee Valen, what you said earlier, right? The longer this is, the less likely we are to use it on a consistent basis. So in my opinion, if if one of us felt that, first of all, we, we do in our meetings say, hey, we can't hear you. Can you speak up? So that's already happening real time. Uh, and if it was an issue systemically, I'm, I'm sure we could, you know, just make a comment in one of the comments and say, hey. Someone needs to speak up a little more. So I think we should just get it off the this list. I think we should save that for others. Okay, so that's consensus. Number two, the meeting is conducted in a business-like manner and follows accepted parliamentary rules and procedures. I think that one should stay. Um, I, that one. I just think it encompasses a lot of things. I agree. Yep, as a new person, I think it is would be helpful to hear where, for me, speaking personally, where I'm not following the right procedure, and I would it would be helpful to be reminded of um, of those items if this if it's a regular occurrence. Okay, number three, the chair. I would like to change that phrasing. The chair takes charge of the meeting and keeps the meeting under control. So when you say you want to change the, the, the phrasing, what, do you mean you want to make it not the chairman? I don't chair. I want to take away the gender. So the chair or the chairperson. Person. Huh? I didn't chair know person. The, person. the chair is the third person? Chairperson. Oh, the chairperson. Does it say chairman? Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Thank you. In terms of the in terms of the question itself, um, I think it's important 
do I think it needs to be a specific called out question? I, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards no, because I think the question above encompasses all of that, right? Because if we, if the chairperson is controlling the meeting and doing all that, then it is following parliamentary procedures and rules. And I think if we didn't see that happening, we could just put that in as a comment on that line item is my, is my opinion, at least. Understood. Tracy, any thoughts? No, I agree. Okay, so that falls under this umbrella. Maybe I would, we could, okay. You could wordsmith it a little if you wanted. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, wordsmith the second one to be including. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I need a minute to think about that, including. Well, accepted parliamentary procedures and rules, including, I don't want to say the general tenor of the meeting, uh, including keeping the meeting under control. Maybe we just leave it as is. Suggestions? Leave it as is or words method? I think, I think the business-like manner um, and my mind covers the meeting on the control. Okay. So we'll leave the right in. All right. Number four, board members treat school personnel and each other politely and with respect during the meeting. I think that needs to stay. Tracy? Sorry, I have to unmute each time. Yeah, no, I agree. I think the respect needs to be there. Um, I just would put, I, I, I don't know, I would switch it around, but it doesn't matter. But the point is everyone treat one another with respect, whether it's the school personnel or one another, or even the public. I don't know if we want to put, you know, visitors or presenters or public, but everyone needs to treat one another with respect. That's a great point, Tracy. So treat the public or treat others polite others what if, what if we what if we changed it and it said board members comma school personnel and the public treat each other politely and with respect during the meeting somehow i'd like to work in there something about those present and not present um, oh, you think it from a virtual perspective? Virtual and uh, uh, if someone just starts discussing, well, which they should not be discussing specific <laughs> individuals, first of all. Um, but if we're talking about a department or staff, I, I still think even if that, if those persons aren't present in the meeting, whether because of virtual or just for discussion purposes. Um, but maybe that's implied. Yeah, I'm actually okay with just the people at the meeting. So I don't know if we should say all meeting participants treat one another with respect. Um, and then, you know, if there's further information, you can write it in the side, like as far as who didn't treat one another with respect, but all participants, all meeting participants. I'm not so concerned about the people who are not participating. I mean, I think it does create a climate of um, disrespect, an unhealthy environment when people are talking about others that are not there. Of course, that creates um, unhealthy, unbusiness-like meeting. But I'm, I guess I'm more concerned with the people who are actually there, at least having respect for one another, that, that minimum standard. Okay, so all meeting participants, including board members, school personnel and the public, treat each other politely and with respect. Works for me. Okay, number five. The appropriate school personnel are present at the meeting to supply information for agenda items.
I'll go first. That's that's a maybe for me. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, if this is supposed to be a reflection of the board and our own behavior, if this is something that's outside of our control, but maybe I'm not understanding the full purpose of this observation sheet of, of this evaluation. Oh. Well, I look at it more as the efficacy of the board meeting. So I do think that um, it is, I, so I, I, can, I, I would want to put this in a maybe, right? So if we're trying to cut it down um, and not have it super long, I would kind of throw this in the maybe pile. And then when we're done, if it's not too long, I would throw it back in. Um, because it is important to have the right uh, personnel at the meeting to answer the question because we need efficacy. If we're having every meeting, oh, we'll get back to you, we'll get back to you. We don't have certain people at the meeting that we need. I do think that that is something that we could evaluate um, ourselves on. It is really probably more indicative of leadership, you know, the board president, the superintendent, the assistant, um, I'm excuse me, the vice president, and whichever board member attends the planning meeting, because um, that is where you discussed, we're going to discuss these items and we need this personnel to either be present or give a report or update us. And so um, it is important to evaluate, yet I'm not so sure I want to leave it in if we're going to, if we're going to cut it down. So I don't know if that's helpful or not. So I, I would agree with that, Tracy. I think we should, I would say, let's leave it for now. And if we need to trim, we'll trim it. But I, I think it's important. Okay. okay, number six, the location and setting of the meeting is comfortable and conducive to getting business done with adequate, adequate room for the public and media. Leave it in. I don't, I don't know if that matters as much anymore. Now we got everything virtual as well. Um, I definitely wouldn't have its own separate um, in my mind, line item for that. Um, can you fit it in somewhere with like the meeting? Maybe you can the, combine it with the next one. Make the public feel welcome at board meetings, providing them with copies of the agenda, et cetera. So we're talking about the general environment of the meeting then, as far as providing materials for the public, making them feel welcome and that everything is comfortable and conducive. Yeah, in my mind, that makes sense. Sounds good to me. Okay, I'm gonna, for me, I'm gonna say this could be another maybe because again, I'm looking at factors we in, we can control. Um, yes, we choose the meeting places, but we don't do the setup. We don't choose the chairs that are put out uh, again. So for me, this is a maybe that we can come back to if, if we don't have space. Um, but I fully agree with the making the public feel welcome. That is definitely, uh, we, you know, we should be greeting people on the way in and, and saying thank you for, for coming to listen or to share your opinions. I, I do think that's integral to, to our role and what we should be doing in meetings. Um, so combining them, I think, is a good, is a good way to do both. Okay, so we'll, we're gonna combine number six and seven. The policy for public participation is explained at each meeting by the board chairman or by the board chairperson and is followed to maintain order. So this dovetails with what we discussed at our last meeting as far as our board statement, which hopefully, Oh, our, our public comment statement is pretty long. So are they saying they want us to read that each meeting? Did I not open it? And I believe that that has happened in the past, um, but not more recently. If memory serves me, the last time we were looking at this document, um, this one came up and I think we had kind of gone to a place of saying, Hey, if the public is signing, signing up to make, um, 
public comments anyways. And we have that basically at the top of the sign-in sheet um, that we didn't necessarily need to read it line by line right before public comment, right? So I think what we had said was, hey, would it be a, a nice compromise to just, you know, before public comment starts, just, you know, say, hey, as a reminder, everyone that signed up for public comment, you know, there was uh, some terms there, you agree to them, please abide by them or something like that without taking up a lot of time reading that whole statement every single time. Tracy, any thoughts? Yeah, I definitely don't think we should be reading it each and every time. Um, and I agree with that. I think um, as long as it's printed, so maybe we need to take this question out or find a different way to, hold on, let me go back to the, see, I see Ashley big now. Oh, I've got a movie thing, okay. Oh, can you go back to the screen with the, uh, the meeting? I just want to see exactly how the question is written, yeah. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. The policy for public participation is explained at each meeting by the board chairperson and is yeah. followed to maintain order. I would, I would take that out maybe, or if we had to have something about that, I would say something like, um, yeah, public participation. I, I would just take that one out. I would take that one out. Well, my thoughts are coming fresh from the public. <laughs> my thoughts are, um, number one, if the public starts to attend more than the regular two or three people, I do think we need to read this before the public comments section of the meetings, just as a reminder for those who don't read when they're writing in, if we see that new people are showing up or it's a larger crowd than normal, or just as a reminder, if, if people start going, you know, even, even regulars, if they start going again, I, I think it might serve as a reminder. And, and because we just recently discussed the fact that we want to stress and we haven't, well, I guess we'll talk about this later, when we discussed the public comments portion, we, we, we mentioned in our, in our last meeting that all comments about personnel, both positive and negative, should be refrained from. I, I feel like that's something we haven't retaught ourselves, let alone the public who may eventually come out to comment again. So, so not only do I think it might be appropriate to keep that in once public attends, but also, where is it? Course. I'm going to run through all these again. Sorry, guys. Uh, where is it? Copy of, nope. But also um, put that specifically in here, maybe reword this a little. And myself, I, I would advocate, I put this in the agenda later on, but I want to remove the address when it's, when it's spoken. They're going to write their address on the sign up form, but I Personally, I feel uncomfortable having people state their address when they're at the podium. That address is more for the board to be able to get back in touch with people, to my understanding, and not to have them be doxxed or <laughs> um, have it broadcast to everyone. I, I don't know if we should I, yeah, I don't think now or, or later on. I don't but, think, um, I don't, I, I can't recall public ever abiding by that. Speaking there, there, yeah, there have been instances. Yeah, I haven't. I, I haven't recently. I um, cringe every time it happens. It's it's not. It's that's not. That's why you remember time. it, <laughs> right? That's it's why you remember it. Time. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, I I agree that we definitely have strayed from the the positive comments lately, um, even board members um, about personnel. So. Um, I agree that we need to address that particular issue. I'm not so comfortable that we need to read the whole pot. That's a long, that's a long blurb every meeting. And um, I mean, listen, if, you, if the majority wants to do that, I'll read it, but it's a lot to read. And sometimes it's just starts sounding like rah, 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 when it's a lot that you're reading over at every single meeting, but, but maybe, I, I don't know, maybe there's a better way to address that. Yeah, I fully agree. I don't think it needs to be done at every meeting. I, I, I'm just saying once we see people showing up again, maybe the first one or two meetings, we state that as an education piece. 
here, here's my suggestion from hearing the, the conversation. Um, what if what we did was at the very beginning of the meeting, we, the board president just quickly said, uh, as a reminder, board meetings are open to the public, but they're not public meetings. Um, we anticipate the, the public will be listening and watching the meeting. And then when we get to the um, public comment section, um, we will then at that point do a quick little, you know, just a reminder to the community, you signed up for the sheet that had all the um, guidelines for public comment, what is and what is not acceptable. And just as a quick reminder, comments on personnel, whether negative or positive, are not allowed. And just leave it at that without going into the whole policy and, and, and all of that. And again, if we're if if folks are signing up on the sheet um, and we have it there and they're saying that they have read it and understand it, then I, I think that's sufficient. Okay. Um, my only other thing is that. We, okay, so right now we're just talking about this evaluation tool. So sure. my my vote would be not to have it on the evaluation tool. But but in our discussion, <laughs> Ashley just brought up a good point. Should there just be a blurb in the beginning reminding folks that this is a meeting of the board and not a public meeting? Um, and then also reading some other maybe shorter blurb for the public comment section. Um, that's, those are good. Maybe we put it on the new business, Chris. I don't know, but we need to, um, we do need to flesh that out. Yep. Exactly what we would say. But my vote would be to take it off of the, um, uh, what is Meeting it? Meeting of the Yeah, evaluation tool. Okay. Ashley, it sounds like you continue to agree with your initial. Okay. Yes, yeah. I agree. I agree with myself. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, the next one, the meeting starts on time and ends within a reasonable time. <laughs> so that, that one is near and dear to my heart. At the same time though, I don't know if we have to specifically call it out. I think it'll be pretty obvious <laughs> if that doesn't happen in a pattern. And the other thing to keep in mind is that the goal of these evaluations or the observations are to track trends, right? And to see, hey, you know what? Uh, we've had a few meetings now where this X, Y, Z has happened. Maybe we should look into changing something to make the meeting more efficient. So I don't think we need it necessarily. Um, I would actually suggest that we kind of combine it a little bit with number 10, because I think they tie together um, in terms of familiarity with the uh, material and, and et cetera, et cetera. I think that just helps everything move along quicker. Um, that's my suggestion. Tracy, any thoughts? Number 10. That sounds like a good um, suggestion. I, I, I was going to say our, you know, that, that a reasonable time is, is arbitrary, right? So <laughs> sometimes we stay, well, you know, one o'clock is way too late, but sometimes, you know, we were there to almost 11. That to me is late. But at the same time, all the stuff we got done, I don't think anyone felt like it was unreasonable, right? So, um, you know, I don't know. I, part of me wants to leave something there to track it. So I like combining it with the next question so that we can at least look back and have that actual data um, for, for how people felt. Like if there was too long of meetings and we could look back at time, et cetera. Um, so maybe combining it is the right thing. Right here. So for example, number 10, board members appear familiar with the materials provided to them prior to the board meeting. So the meeting, so the business of the meeting, so the business of the meeting can be concluded in a reasonable time. I don't know. I was just going to say, keep it simple and literally just literally grab the meeting starts on time census and piggy it back behind the, the meeting word on number 10. All right. Okay. The nice thing is a lot of this ties into our board norms, I think. 
with a code of ethics, one of those. Um, okay, these criteria may not be as easily observed. See notes after each criteria. Okay, number 11, the agenda is received by board members within sufficient time for them to study and review it prior to the meeting. Note, you may have to listen to comments from the board members or ask board chair when materials were received. I'm not sure what that note means. I think, I think uh, Trustee Allen, this was written, this, this template was built with the idea that one board member per meeting was gonna fill it out. Um, so I think for these parts, the thought process, which is not what I think we're trying to do. I think we're trying to hand it out to all of our members, which makes more sense in my mind, right? So you get a, a, a reasonable assessment. Mm -hmm. um, so I think because of that, they're saying you may have to, like, you may have to prod your colleagues and try to ask for feedback, but I don't think we need any of that, right? Because we'll, we can all just fill one out. Um, in terms of the content of the question, uh, I think it makes sense. But I think, again, there's a lot of overlap between it and other questions that follow it. So I think we could easily combine questions and make it just streamlined. Right. I was thinking this isn't even necessary because we receive our agendas usually on the Friday before, at least in my short history. So. Yeah, um, I, I, I was wondering if we should just take it off, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm not opposed to taking it off. I know the, there was a point in time where we were getting a lot of last minute things uh, and we were showing up to the meetings and, and, and because of that, um, and I'm sure this, this isn't a GCSD specific, I mean, we didn't develop this observation, you know, obviously it's there, so it happens all over, but I think uh, as a board, uh, there's a much better job this time around and, and things are really done ahead of time, so we, we have a, a good idea on what's going on. So yeah, maybe we don't need it. Yeah, I agree. I, I think the upcoming items are more relevant to our real world, and this doesn't seem to be a specific issue, number 11. Okay, number 12, the agenda is accompanied by an appropriate amount of rationale and or data. Note, are board members requesting additional information on most items? Number, well, I'll stop. Tracy, are you going to say? Um, no, I'm sorry. I, I had been unmuted from before. Um, I mean, I, I would completely, I would completely trash number thirteen because we do have a procedure for that. Um, so we don't need to worry about whether or not appropriate procedures are in place. They are in place. Um, we know the five day rule that people to submit things. Um, agenda is accompanied by appropriate amount of rationale and data. I have a hard time with this because normally at our work session, we're working through the agendas ahead of time and, and learning and having the opportunity to ask questions or ask for backup material before we vote in them at the following meeting. Yeah. That's the intent of this question. So, so if that's the case, then let's just remove it. Right. I, I might see this as irrelevant. 12 and 13 for me, but I don't know how you guys feel about this. Yeah, I'm fine with removing 13. Um, Same. Yeah, I don't think we need to keep it. Okay. So moving on to 14. If new issues surface at the meeting, the superintendent is given sufficient time to research those issues so the board is not forced to make a decision on the spot. Note, consider the meeting as a whole. That one's hard for me because I would say no, just because of how things are right now, but I know and I've been in meetings in the past that I would want that there. So I, I don't know how, I, I, I'm interested to see how you see yourself. I would keep it. I would keep it as well. If new issues, are, so this implies that the new issues are brought to the board and not from the board. That's, that's my opinion when I read the question, yes. Yes, I think we should definitely keep it. Tracy, were you gonna add something? 
No, I'm on my. Okay. If I hit the wrong thing, it moves. Um. Okay. I mean, so for I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Then we'll leave it. Did you want to change any wording on there, or give it another thought and cycle back to it? Um. So. I mean, I, I can I can recall situations where we would learn about. Um, actually, this just happened. <laughs> of course, it's exec session stuff, so I can't mention. But this actually just happened with um, topic A. With, <laughs> yeah, with the with the with the situation that then led to more conversation that we had this last meeting. Um, and we did have to make, so this was, this was during the long meeting that went to 1 a.m., right, where we found out about um, a situation and did have to make a, a decision on the spot um, with whether or not to go to a, another level, for example, I'll, I'll say that. Um, and so, so yeah, so we do need to leave it because it did just happen. Um, I'm not sure that this evaluates us though but, it, but just just recall um this isn't necessarily about just the board right this is the meeting about the meeting itself yeah. so this is optimizations we can further make to our meeting that ultimately will make us all better right but it's about hey what are we what are we doing here right um that can be improved um oh. So just to see what it yeah. says at the top, periodically assess how effectively and efficiently meetings are being prepared and run. And the full board includes administration. And I, I agree with what Ash is just saying because of this. Okay, this sounds good. The entirety of mm -hmm. our district clerk, our administration, the board. I think this is okay. just the meetings so, yeah, let's, the let's people responsible for organizing them. Yeah, let's leave that. Okay. Um, number 15, board members display good listening skills, a spirit of compromise when problems arise and work to achieve unity, considering the meeting as a whole. I think, I think 15 and 16 can be combined. They're basically the same question in my mind. Sixteen for transcription purposes. Board members vote their conscience, but support the majority decisions. <clears throat> good evening, Dr. Iverson. Yeah. Hey, good evening. Hi. 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 Hello. We're just um, going through a board meeting observation sheet. We're considering for use. Yeah. Um, to periodically assess how effectively and efficiently meetings are being prepared and run. We're coming okay. near the end of it. We're finding items that we can consolidate or get rid of so that mm -hmm. it's condensed into a one page, quick, easy to fill out form after a meeting. Sounds like a plan. Okay. And right now we're considering um, number 15 and 16. Tracy, Ashley has Suggested you combine these two items. Did you have any thoughts? Give me board one members second. So, uh -huh. um, um, board members display good listening skills, a spirit of compromise when problems arise and work to achieve unity. Board members vote their conscience, but support the majority decisions. Okay, I, I would just leave it out, but okay, we can combine it. <laughs> we need to leave it, we can combine it, I guess. I think this is like unspoken, but maybe we need to leave it. Let's see how many we end up, how many questions we actually end up with. Okay. So combine. Okay, the next one, the board follows its role as a policy body and does not become involved in making administrative decisions at the meeting. Note oh, we have to any leave that. examples <laughs> of varying into administrative areas, then weigh the big picture of the meeting. Gotta leave that one <laughs> for sure. It's a good reminder. I agree. Tracy, any yeah, thoughts? I or, it. Actually, I okay. 
Okay, the last few. Number 18, items are rarely added to the agenda at the last minute in order to avoid surprises for either board members, the superintendent, or administrative staff. Note, base your response on what happens at the meeting you attend. And didn't we have a question earlier that was along these lines, but not exactly the same thing? Number 14, I think it was. Number 14. Number 14. Yeah, so. Surface at the meeting, the superintendent is given sufficient time to research those issues so the board is not forced to make a decision. So, do you want to make a question about timing that kind of com combines both of these? Yeah, I, I was thinking something like that, something where we can consolidate the two because I think they're both valid points, they're important. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just not sure how we're doing on real estate at this point with that one sheet uh, goal that we have. Hi, I'm gonna have Ivy send you the link. This is worse than watching paint dry. We're live. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. Four, five. We might have room. Okay. So we'll combine 14 and 18. All right, number 19, the agenda is divided into action items and information items with consideration given to appropriate timing and placement for board discussion and public discussion. So is the board deciding on what criteria you're gonna keep our trustee mayors or our trustees or our which ones you want to revise? Is this the start? Is that what you're doing? Um, deciding on a little, a little bit. Of, yes, a little bit of everything. Get a, getting rid of things we don't find relevant. Combining right. some. Mm -hmm. Getting rid of and. Um, so I know, Trustee Maris, did you talk to eighteen? I know I'm late. The, the guy just left, but did you talk to eighteen? Because you and I've talked a lot about that last minute piece. Eighteen. No, we didn't, the, talk, we didn't talk to it. We literally just what you, we literally just got to oh, that number okay. just now. Yeah. Wonder, wonder, no, wonder. we didn't talk more about it. Um, okay. I didn't know if you just, wanted to, were you deciding whether this was something you wanted to get rid of? Because I know you and I, when we meet, we, you know, we talk about these last minute items and being added and I've been really trying to avoid them too, because I don't want the board to be surprised. Um, technically, the agenda that the board gets that's posted on Friday, like most places posted for the and board members look at it over the weekend, you see what's on it for the following Tuesday, should be what's on the agenda Tuesday. Because a lot of board members, and I don't know if this happens with trustees. So this is where you can, this is from my experience. I tried to post it on Friday. It was posted on Friday and try not to have any changes because board members read it like you all do all those documents over the weekend. And if something was added, you may not have known. And the uh, board docs, it will send you a little message sometimes that if something's been added to the agenda. So you can arrive at the board meeting, my point is, and not have the most recent agenda. And that's where the surprises ended up and it, it just was not the best practice. So I said to, I try to make sure we don't do that, but I, to be honest, because of the hiring right now and last minute time, last minute, we may get a person that we can get on the agenda because there's a class where we need someone there. It could be a special education class. There's, there's some compliance issues. I have called, oh, I've text trustee mayors and, you know, and I'll say, can we add it? So I don't think it's a practice to have, but and then the rest of the board may not see those changes until at the board meeting. So sometimes there is an urgency. Yeah, I just wanna um, I just wanna let you know for this for the purposes of this form, it's a end of meeting evaluation form. So it's whether people feel like and it's and it's subjective, right? So someone may we may while we may add something late. Um, because of all the hires or whatever, I usually do try to text the board members and let them know like, hey, make sure you check the packet because there's been an addition or whatever. But, mm -hmm. um, but 
also people may not feel like it was so much of a surprise if they were okay. able to see it. So right. um, I do think this needs to stay because it's a good reminder to all of us. Um, yeah, not to do it. And it, yeah, and also it's it's data collection, right? So at the end of the year, we can look back at our evaluation forms and look at the meet out of out of twenty six meetings we had this year. We only felt like there were surprises or last minute things on five of them or on three of them. Mm-hmm. And so then we know it's not a chronic issue. It's something that comes up because of hiring. So I would definitely leave it. Um, but I, I do think we should somehow combine it because we're talking about the timing issue. Um, mm-hmm. What do you guys think? I would uh, um I would like to leave it because although Tracy, you have been really good at, at giving us calls to to give us a heads up that something may be getting changed, our leadership may change. So I think it's it's just good practice to look at this document not based on current personalities, but the needs of a board in general. So that's why I would like to keep it, but combine it with number fourteen. I do agree with um, I forget who suggested that, I apologize. But number 14 and 18 are very related and I do think we could combine them. I agree with that. Okay, good, so we'll combine them, sounds good. Um, how do we combine it and make it, <laughs> make it sound, uh, make sense? Well, since I can't get both of them on the screen at the same time. Um, if you zoom out a hair, you might be able to pull it off. Good one. And then scroll a little, just make it. <laughs> okay. If new issues surface at the meeting, superintendent is given sufficient time to research. So it's meet both at the meeting and on the agenda. So I would prefer putting the first part of 18 since the agenda comes before the meeting. So I'd start the wording there. Items are rarely added to the agenda at the last minute. Items are rarely added to the agenda or surface at the meeting at the last minute in order to avoid surprises. And so super, so sufficient time is available to research issues mm-hmm. um, before decisions are made. Keep it kind of general. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think that's fine. Um, I think maybe if you if if we if we said items are rarely added to the agenda at the last minute, in order to avoid surprises, period, and then leave the if new sur- new issues surface at the meeting part alone. Okay. And I only say that because I'm I'm thinking of what you said earlier, which is absolutely right. We're not just building this for our board, right? It's a future board. So if, I think if we cut too much, it may not make sense as to why we even put it there, the context. So that's why I think hmm. that might be the better approach. Okay. Tracy, are you okay with that? I will take your silence as consent. And we'll move on to number 19 and you can jump in if you have something to add in a minute. Number number 19, the agenda is divided into action items and information items with consideration given to appropriate timing and placement for board discussion and public discussion. So here again, looking at that question and looking at the one right behind it, they seem to be intrinsically connected. Right. So for transcription purposes, number 20, there is a rational relationship between how long the board spends on an agenda item and the importance of the item. I mean, I I feel mixed about that and here's why. Sometimes things are kind of clear cut and it may be very important, but it's clear cut. And so the board may not need to spend a lot of time on it. Sometimes an item might not be super, you know, important in the in the hierarchy of things, but it may be a little confusing. And then, or we all seven may have different opinions about it. 
and want to, you know, discuss those those opinions. So I'm not sure how well 20 fits into, for my opinion, how well it fits into a good assessment of the efficacy of a meeting. My thoughts are that number 19 isn't as relevant because it's kind of, we already have the template set, although we are discussing how to move public comments around. Um, number 20 to me is more important and relevant to the functioning of the meeting and as far as what, again, we control. Uh, but how do we spend more time on something that's more important if it's clear cut? I think it's, I think it's, I think the context there, the rationale is for one of those situations where it's something that may not be as important and we've beat the dead horse like five times over it. That doesn't happen a lot with our board currently, but it has happened in the past. And I can see how in a future board, potentially someone could be really passionate about a specific topic and kind of just keep running it around the circle. So I think that's where 20 comes in. Mm -hmm. So let me reread um, 19 again. The agenda is divided into action items and information items with consideration given to appropriate timing and placement for board discussion and public discussion. Well, that's just not done. We don't have action items and information items. We have, we have personnel items, non-instructional non personnel items. And so when we vote, in a, in a group, it says, you know, item C through whatever. Um, and then the other items are just, but we, that, that's actually not done with our agendas. We can was, do them if you guys would like to, but it's not done currently. No, I, I think, I think we, you do do them already. So we do have at the tail end of the meeting, we have the, the board action items, right? And that's where we do the voting. Um, and, and I would I would argue in my mind that the beginning of the meeting is really all the informational stuff. So I think we're already doing it. Um, so I don't think we need number 19 because I think it's already covered in, in the way uh, the leadership team is currently structuring the meeting and and making sure that everything is pretty clear uh, so that the board can move efficiently through the agenda. So I, I think we actually got that covered pretty well. So I don't think we need number okay. 19. Okay, I, I was thinking of it written differently, but yeah, what you're saying makes a lot of sense. So yeah, let's take that out. Now, what about number 20? So you guys both feel left. So I would take it out, but you guys both want to have it in. Um, okay. Yeah, and I, I think I, we should keep it only because, again, I'm just thinking, you know, of all the things that can that can really uh, sidetrack a meeting's efficiency. Um, you know, if we spend you know, an hour talking about one particular topic um, that maybe didn't warrant that much time, at least initially in the planning, uh, and, and it becomes a, we're just going around the same thing in circles and circles, then I think that's where that kicks in. So I think it is pretty important. I agree. You know, I realize I'm thinking more. Can you hear me? I'm sorry if you yes, can't yes. hear me. Um, I, I think I'm thinking more currently than in the future or past. And that's probably where I need to alter my thought because currently I'm, we have half of the board is brand new. So we may spend more time on particular things, but, um, but you guys make very valid points. So let's leave it in. Okay. All right, the rest of the forum is just general comments. Please share any general observations about the meeting and any specific examples of actions, positive or negative, that you feel need to be mentioned. And then there's a total score. I propose that I take our feedback right now and create a new document to see what it looks like, to see if it's concise enough or and present it at the next meeting for final comments. Or do you propose any other next steps? Chris, how many questions do we have now? How many questions do we break it down? So, to? if I'm counting appropriately, one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Nice number. I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Trustee Valen, what I was going to say is I think that's a good idea. What I would also say is if you could send it to us via email mm -hmm. uh, prior to the next meeting so we can all kind of mull it over. I know I, I like to see things and really dig them through in my mind a few times before I have a good answer. Yes. Thank you. Will do. Okay. So moving on. So uh, apologies. Where are we? Okay. <clears throat> So I just wanted to, um, to say the next topic, board goals and evaluation, discuss which goals will be our basis for evaluation for current school year 21-22. School year um, we had mentioned at a recent board meeting that we would do a mid-year check-in in January, February. Um, but I'm unclear, so I, I wanted to take this opportunity in this committee to ask whether the board's own self-evaluation would be based on the latest set of goals we had or whether, here I go again, or whether it's going to tie in with the strategic plan development, which uh, Mr. McCormick is, is beginning with us, I believe this week. Um, I'm not quite sure how to start this conversation. So um, first I'll just pull up the last set of the board goals, which were for 2021 school year. And while we are currently this year in the process of creating the next five-year strategic plan, and therefore I believe both the board's goals and the superintendent's goals would roll off of that, I'm right. not sure how relevant these goals are and what we would be evaluating ourselves on in January. Um, Trustee Maris, Trustee Pineda, I don't know what's happened in the past. Can you help guide what you expect, what you expected us to be doing this year? So I, I can give you what I would do in my mind, what makes sense logically to me. Um, okay. I don't think it makes sense that we stick to these prior goals as a frame of reference. I mean, we're basically, um, going through this exercise, uh, starting it already, right? Determining the next five-year plan. I think that's what we should be tracking to. In terms of uh, timing and the mid-year check-in, uh, in my opinion, um, in this particular instance, it should be more on how are we functioning as a board could be our basically our topic for the mid-year check-in. How are we following our communication protocols? How are we handling all of that, right? And then I would leave the end year uh, evaluation of ourselves as the real, uh, you know, tracking against what we have by that point already fully established, vetted out, and and we have something really tangible to to as a metric in my mind. Trustee Marins, what were your thoughts as board president? Yeah, I would agree. I do want to um, just let you know, because you're asking me and, and me and uh, Ashley what happened last time. And both Ashley and I, I think actually, Ashley, you're shorter, but both Ashley and I are in my, I'm in my fifth year here. And we had a five-year strategic plan. So I actually was involved in the strategic plan and the goal setting from the, from the community point of view, from the parent and community, I was not in the boardroom doing this process. So I do want to clarify that. Um, so I can't give you a solid answer on that. I would agree that we really need to um, do our goals from a new stand, start, start point. <clears throat> we have a half new board. Um, actually, only there's one, only one board member that was here at the time of doing those previous goals. So I think we need to, um, I don't think it makes sense, as Ashley said, to start from there. Okay. So it sounds like we should still continue planning a mid-year check-in and focus on the areas 
which Trustee Pineda mentioned, and maybe whatever else comes up at a retreat. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm curious, Dr. Iverson, uh, you're the, the administrative expert here, right? Do you think that that's a, a reasonable approach or do you think we should modify that? Yeah. You know, I'm looking at the goals from last year. That's a, a lot uh, that you all fleshed out under those focus areas. It's, that was so much. I mean, the one, do you mind going back there, please, Trustee uh, Valen? I mean, I know we're going to move forward from that, but these are focus areas that, you, and you, I mean, it's look, uh, just so much you put under each one. I, I don't even know how you accomplish all of that. I, I just think, uh, you know, two or three, you went and you had, uh, did you go, you had five focus areas? I, I mean, one, areas. one or two. Mm -hmm. um, so here's the overlap. I mean, I think this is where we really just need to do it in a retreat with uh, Ed McCormick, with um, not Ed McCormick, uh, Dr. Coles get clarity. Okay, so I have written goals. Technically, in the, my goals normally are the goals that come out of that strategic plan that are fleshed out through the structure of the committees and all that will happen with the specific one or two strategies or activities we're going to do with measurable timelines. And, and though, those really are the goals of the district, which are my charge to implement. So they become my goals. And they're from what the board has impacted or involved and says, this is what uh, in the community, what we want to see done. Because when those goals are done that there, if I have another set of goals, which I do right now that I'm working on, they, sh they should fold nicely into that. But you just have, then you have go board goals. The goals from the strategic plan are developed by the board in the community, and then they become what I start implementing. So I'm not used to three sets of goals. I'm used to the goals of the strategic plan being what I'm charged to do. They're the goals of the board. And, and then there are goals, specific things in there that, that I, flesh out that we're going to accomplish in those focus areas, and then I must go do it. Um, so I, I'm a little confused myself. I think this is, like you said, Trustee Valen, we need to stop and talk. As I talked to you last retreat around where you were on your what's dear to your hearts and what each of you felt we needed to work on, which has started that conversation around your goals for the district. And then or are you speaking goals strictly as how you govern as a board? I mean, so are we clear on what goals we're trying to describe here? Um, what we just went over that criteria, it is board behavior. Board, what you do as a governance, how you govern as a board team around your meeting structure and that's, so, but board goals, um, are those your goals there too? Uh, I'm, I'm right now just a little confused. I'm just used to a structure where there's one set of goals and it's the goals of the strategic plan and they become the goals that the board and through collaboration we've developed that I'm held accountable for achieving with support from the board. Tracy, can you comment? I believe that these board goals did are basically the same as the five-year strategic plan that was developed 2014. Yeah, they're 15. usually right in line. Yeah, they're usually right in, right line. in line with both, yeah, with the strategic plan. And so, and, and I didn't want to mislead anyone in, when I say that I wasn't involved in, I wasn't, in, I wasn't on the board when they created the board goals, but every year we looked at them and we updated them. So we may like remove something if we've taken care of it or alter something if we're doing something different. So we did do that every single year, but <clears throat> I think we're at the juncture now where we have to decide since we're doing all new goals I don't think we can necessarily update these goals until we <laughs> when we decide as a full district strategically which direction we're going in and what areas we want to focus on mm -hmm. yeah and just to add a little context I think the the board goals and evaluation section we're talking about right now is um how the board's progress against those 
strategic goals, right? Uh, as well as, is there anything the board needs to do to support those goals, right, on an annual basis as, as they're being implemented? So I think, I think it's both of those things, but uh, Dr. Iverson, you're absolutely right. This is really, these BOE goals that you see up on the screen are really the strategic goals um, mm -hmm. that's informing this. And this is pretty much for the most part, while it may say 2020 to 2021, it's really the five-year plan. Uh, right. Just updated as 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 President Mayor said, you know, sometimes we'll make a few tweaks here or there, but it's really that guiding principle that is the base. And that makes better sense if it's over time, because with one year, it's impossible to measure all of this. So I can see this being a five-year plan. So yes, that then makes better sense for me. Mm -hmm. Yes, I pulled this off of just for information for you and for anyone watching. Um, under our board page and the board goals, you'll mm -hmm. see, this is the last one, but you'll see all five years for mm -hmm. the five focus areas that came out of the last strategic plan. And I, I agree, this probably should be called district goals mm -hmm. instead of BOE goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we may wanna consider instead of it uh, being, and this is something to think about, obviously we don't have to, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, right? So we can consider that maybe for the future, instead of putting each year's goals, maybe we just keep it as a running list, you know, during this five-year period and we just update it as we go. Cause that, that might add to some of the confusion, I think. Mm -hmm. I just also want to, go ahead, Tracy. Okay, thank you. Um, I just also want to clarify, though, we do have to have separate board goals, even though they're right in line with the strategic plan and with the district goals, they're going to, or they're supposed to be the goals of the action of the board. So, you know, we do need to look at that when we're, when we're functioning, there needs to be a structure um, because we don't do exactly what the district does, even though we're all trying to get to the same Finishing point, um, the district is the one that does the, the action in day-to-day -day activities. And so the way that those goals, even though they're the same heading, the way they'll be written are to execute and ours would be more written in a way of oversight. So that that is the, the slight difference. Mm -hmm. So just to clarify for myself, so for example, on, on the previous goals, if one of them under facilities and technology was address district-wide ventilation issues as per BCS, the board's responsibility would be to approve funding for items or... There you go. And also um, conduct facilities meetings, you know, facilities committee meetings, uh, review these things with the architect. You know, that's what we do as board members, but mm -hmm. we don't actually, uh, I don't know what would be a district goal, uh, approve, um, well, no, we approve the contracts, um, uh, work with vendors. You know, it wouldn't say something like that because that's what the district and the employees do. Well, Dr. Everson, if I'm not wrong, it'll be Mr. McCormick kind of guiding us how we could. Yes. Mm -hmm. Phrase. And those, those goals are coming out of the work he's about to start. But, the, but this is here. This is what's going to come out of that. Again, taking what I'm doing, I'm going to hand him, and you will see it again. As I, I don't want to be redundant. But that's it. I'm going to say to him and show him, you will see. Here is what the community has already said from these sessions and so forth. This is where you know where you are. We We numbered your focus areas already we clearly showed you clearly show where your heart where you where we are working so and I've already talked to him and said now you you went at they had a retreat told him what happened and I said so I gave the board their data based on my conversations with them because he's about to have some with you I know and I wanted him to know what I had done and I said so I have data already to share with you around what all seven have said and how I've calibrated that data to say, this is what the focus areas are. That, I mean, they seem to be identified. Now, what I'm waiting to see is when I finish all the other stuff and look at that data to see if it, if it uh, validates that. And that could be another conversation if there's more of a push for uh, the ranking or another focus area. But so he didn't know that. So I, I said, so when you meet with them, I, uh, you're gonna start this process. 
I want you to know what pieces have been done already. So those focus areas, then he said, well, then he's still going to meet with you. They will be the areas that we will then flesh out. We will have committees formed for all of those areas like you did before, who will flesh out this stuff here that you have listed here, the specific, and there's going to be goals, specific goals, and act one or two or three in each focus area with specific activities, timelines, and, and measurements of how you're going to measure whether or not we accomplished it and when. So the timelines could be, like you said, at, at Trustee Pineda, over that five-year period, when we expect in these various goals and specific activities to have accomplished any those activities, knowing some will we accomplish earlier than others. Uh, so uh, that's what, so I didn't we didn't get to the goals with me. Uh, we were going to start fleshing out that when we stopped. And now I'm thinking it's probably good we did because this is now where he comes in with those focus areas and he then takes the work and continues to do that. Remember I said he will he will flesh that piece out starting with those focus areas. So I think we've already identified that. And if you go back to my goals, I aligned my goals with those five focus areas because I just in general, I have instructional leadership. I think I have financial leadership. I align my what I'm doing with the goals too. But I, I have to tell you, I'm just look, I I'll hope we get clarity on it because I I'm there are two sets of goals I'm working on then my own, these, and then the board will have their goals. If there are three sets, then that's okay. I just want to make sure we're they're all in alignment around the same focus areas. So if your goals are in those focus areas from the governance field, my goals are in the area from the implementation operational piece. And, the, and they are as well the district strategic goals. I, my goals are, uh, and strategic goals should really be the, almost the same because I'm the one that's gonna operationalize whatever comes out of that. You're gonna support it through your governance Mm -hmm. And and allow those things to happen through your voting and meeting and and validating and permitting. That's where the board gives that kind of connection to my doing it. Then I can't do a lot of that without you governing and and looking at it from that aerial view. So, did, so I don't know if that, did, did that make any sense? It made sense to me. It does to me as well. Maybe what I'll do is try to investigate whether there are other board goal, like generic templates that address more specifically the governance and how we support our administration in our, in our district rather than specific operational issues, just, you know, the generic language that could dovetail in. Um, I don't know that there will be any out there, but I'll, I'll see if I can find anything. Mm -hmm. I was also going to suggest, um, this is for consideration, just popped up in my head. Maybe this is something we want to lightly touch on with Dr. Coles and just get his mm -hmm. feedback on how he has seen it done in other districts. Yeah. Uh, you know, not necessarily that we're going to make a decision based off of that, but at least it, it's helpful to hear this from multiple perspectives, I think. And sometimes the light bulbs go off and it's like, that's the one. <laughs> That's exactly right. I agree. I agree. I agree. Okay. And I'll bring my goals, you know, and let him, if it's, uh, if it's okay with you, if uh, that we get to that, he can see what I submitted to you so far. Because um, I'm already documenting and collecting evidence around what I've done so far on just what I've submitted to you. So when it gets time for my work with you for evaluation purposes, I can show you what I've accomplished and, and what, where we are and what we need to go. So I, I have shared a little bit of this with Dr. Coles. I'll tell you to say, you know, I, there's a set of goals already there that I'm working on that somehow it's got to fold into some of this. So uh, he too said, so there's a, you have goals, they're going to be board goals. I said, uh, yeah, and we still working on the strategic plan. So I think it's a good time to pause it and talk about it with him and get some guidance. So we're clear on what, we, what our goals are, what we're trying to accomplish. Committee, can we, 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I didn't want to interrupt. No, I'm you. done. I'm done. I, oh, okay. you... I was going to say as committee members, can we all the four of us um, make sure to also possibly um, look at NISBA as well? Because, you know, I, I, I again, I wasn't around um, in the creation of the goals or even when um, maybe the prior board goals, but there are I'm sure there must be a reason why <clears throat> there's these different level of goals were, were mm -hmm. there. And um, perhaps there's some guidance from NISBA. So maybe before, before our retreat, uh, the four of us can, you know, look around and take some looks into maybe um, some information from the school board directive position as well. And that's one uh, of the places I was going to look, Tracy. So, so great. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't get any of that in my training packet the other day. I did try to find some to share at this meeting, but I'll, I'll do a little bit of a deeper deeper dive with NISBA and then probably reach out to Westchester Putnam or whoever I liaison is. Maybe I'll reach out to that person to find out. Um, but as far as asking Dr. Coles, um, can we put the bug, is, bug in his ear before the retreat that we want to ask him this and sure. who, okay if you give me permit if it's okay because he and I have a, a call to plan the retreat uh, I've already talked to him once as I mentioned so I if it's okay I can certainly bring it up I mean we've talked about it informally uh, but when we planned the last retreat and how I was just going to talk about how we you know the part I did do so I can certainly piggyback and continue that conversation. We can be prepared to uh, talk about it on the 16th. Can I can I just throw in the little curveball that we agreed to do a closed retreat focused oh. on communication and board relations. And if we do venture into the goals topic, it becomes public. Mm. This is a public discussion. You know what I mean? It has to be a public discussion. Well, I have a question about that. Um, is that true? If we're not actually discussing, we're not setting the goals. We're just looking no. for clarification on how the goals should be structured. Is it uh, one set of goals? Is it three sets, three goals, three sets of goals? I think that changes it a little bit, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, right, like I mean, it, if we look at it in that way and we don't get into the details of any goal we just talk about <clears throat> how process. do we function the process the process how do we function and how are we most effective then with with doing goals and planning then yeah it could stay an exec session item another yeah. option could be that maybe we could request that information from him to share with us as a committee so that it's not done at that meeting. And then we discuss what he shares with us in the committee. Well, aren't we asking him, just give us clarity on, on the bucket of goals we need. Is, are there separate goals for the strategic plan? Are there goals the superintendent needs to develop? And are there goals the board does? And if so, how do we connect them so that they all align, but very separate for our individual roles? And that's just, we're not doing the goal work. It's uh, just kind of getting clarity on. McCormick is starting strategic. I've done goals and now the board is discussing goals. So that's what I mean. Can we, you trustee Maris, do you think that's okay? Yeah, I do. I actually think that should be fine. Of course I had. I kind of had to sign in and out, so I'm a little confused. But no, I think that would be fine, actually, um, just because it, it really is, it would fall under the umbrella of training, which remains um, exec session. Mm -hmm. and, training. Uh, and just going back to Trustee Val and your comment about if we wanted him to give the committee the information ahead of time, I, I would actually, in this case, say I'd rather we do it during the retreat only because I, I suspect that as that conversation is happening about process and how we should be structuring this, uh, how many sets of goals there should be, et cetera, I suspect there will be questions that come up um, from board members, not just us three. Um, so I think I'd rather have that conversation one time for efficiency perspective. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 
So thank you, Dr. Iverson, for 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 your for your plan to reach out to Dr. Coles about this. Sure, I think it's good. This is good timing, and uh, this is you know what we are we are at this point where this is where we need to start discussing it. So great. Okay. All right. What time are we at? We're at seven thirty. Um, the next item was just a quick look at the governance handbook. I again, this is probably more of a question. Pending the approval or not of the resolution in December, as far as adding a student member to the um, to the board of education, I guess we need to find out if there is a. Okay, let's skip that. I skipped ahead. All right. Let's go to the governance handbook section six, item A, item B. How is the agenda set? And how do I get an item added, which we did just discuss, but let's just jump there. Section six. Okay. The reason I, I bring this up is because I was thoroughly reading the governance handbook. Thank you, Mr. Pineda, for all your work, as well as uh, Ms. Mayers and Mr. Williams last year um, on this document. Um, but I noticed here, how is the agenda set for transcription purposes? I'll quickly read it. The superintendent and the board president share the responsibility for agenda setting, keeping the vice president and one additional member for non-special and non-work session meetings who will participate on a rotational basis in the conversation. A leadership meeting consisting of the board president, vice president, and superintendent is held prior to completion of the agenda. Preparation of the agenda is the responsibility of the superintendent in collaboration with the board president and board, board vice president. Um, I guess this came up because, in my mind um, because we are including an additional member on a rotational basis. Um, and it is documented here. And a leadership meeting consisting of the board president, vice president, and superintendent is held prior to the completion of the agenda. So this really just specifies that leadership meetings will happen for agenda setting purposes. And I did not know if leadership meetings would happen on a more frequent basis. So um, let me try to remember here the context behind this. If, if I remember correctly, um, the reason we limited in verbiage, it we limited the, the wording to for agenda purposes uh, was to give us flexibility. Uh, flexibility in the event that you know, first of all, we're not sure if if the additional member will be available for each meeting, right? Because it's rotating through, uh, and they're basically there are four of us, no, five of us that would be of the pool to rotate, right? Because the president and the vice president will always be there. So since we were rotating through it, the thought process was, well, what if you know it's my turn this week and I'm not available? Um, so that's one thing. But the other thing was uh, we wanted to leave flexibility in terms of the frequency of those meetings, of the leadership meetings, um, that, that, has, that has changed over time. Sometimes they've been weekly, sometimes they've been bi-weekly only when there's an agenda. Um, so I think that's why we left it a little vague there. Um, yeah, I think that's why we did that. So then it says for, basically it's for the regular, one additional member for the regular meetings and not the work session meetings. I'm just curious, the work session meetings are really where you're setting the agenda for the regular meeting. So I'm just, because that's where you're at the work session, you're working through the issues that will be voted on in the regular meeting. And I'm curious if either- I would agree. I don't, I'm not sure why, I'm gonna be honest with you, I this has not been practiced properly over the five years that I've been here. I think the first year when I was a brand new board member, I got rotated into a meeting. And that was it. I think maybe once. It wasn't even like two times that year. Um, I don't remember if it was the work session or the regular meeting. Um, I don't remember why we specified it as the work session meeting. 
because this is a pretty robust document and I and we took quite a bit of time to go through it. So I do not recall the rationale for choosing regular over work session. Um, so I, I could not tell you, I'm sorry. We can, we can change it though, right? I mean, that's the point of this meeting. We could always suggest a modification. Uh, I, I think when I read those words, um, what comes to my mind is, yeah, the the agenda for the public or non-work session meetings, right, really is kind of set at the work session meetings, right? It's, it's kind of talked about ahead of time, and then we go through the items during the work session to make sure there's clarity, if there's any questions that come up, et cetera. And then we kind of essentially vote on the majority of those items during our public session meeting. Um, maybe there was some thought around it at that point. We can totally change it now. Um, we can say, um, you know, specifically at the work session meetings, which kind of dictate the agenda for the public meetings. I mean, that that's an option. Um, I know we went into the non-special because the non-special, when there's a special meeting, obviously it's a, it's a different scenario there. Right. Um, so maybe that's some of along the lines of what we were doing, but we can change it. Trustee Pineda and Trustee Dallin, you guys are part of the five that would rotate. Would you prefer, because listening to you talk, I, it made me think, would you prefer to be rotated in for every meeting? That would give people more opportunity to get in the room because there's five board members rotating and we only have 10 months of you know school per se. Um, that would give you more time to rotate in. I see, well, first I will say, I, I do prefer that someone is rotated in at the work session if we're only choosing one meeting a month because that's where the the decisions are made as to what's included. I see pros and cons to being included in every meeting because of course, the more voices you have in a room, the longer the meetings can go. And I am cognizant of the fact that we're trying to be efficient with everyone's time. However, as far as training purposes, uh, I, I can see pros and cons here. I'm, I'm curious what, what the others in the committee here have to say. Um, from my opinion, you know, the more I think about it, I think it makes more sense to just do every meeting. Um, and the reason why uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember why we we have this to begin with, and it's coming back to me. The point of having the uh, one additional member is to give each board trustee the opportunity to help help you know craft the agenda and and have any particular items that you know, may have not been covered yet, but you know, have been a, in their perspective, um, need to at least be discussed whether it needs to be on an agenda or not. That, that was the reason for this, that was the rationale for this. So with that said, I think what uh, Trustee Mayor says makes a lot of sense. Maybe we should just change it to every board meeting um, to leave the non-special because obviously that's gonna be a different scenario, but it shouldn't be just work session or, or public meeting, it should be both. Dr. Iverson, do you have thoughts on this? Um, from my, just from my experience, um, I've not had I've not had a structure like this. So this is new. It's okay. It's a good structure. I like the fact that it rotates and other members of the board can participate in that meeting prior to the board meeting. The, the work session or we, uh, where that bulk of the that discussion is around what's going to be on the agenda. I definitely can see that person being a part of that. The regular meeting. Really, that meeting before the regular meeting, which is the voting meeting coming up, that should be even quicker. And it's it's just uh, really you're just kind of just about you know just kind of confirming the very same items. Nothing new should be added. And really, that meeting should go bing 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 because we're voting on what has already been discussed and at by the board the week before. So I don't know if you a person that's another person coming on for that meeting. It's like because it's the same month two meetings, if you have a different person at each of those meetings, the second one at the regular who wasn't at the work session, what's the experience that person gets who wasn't involved from the, from the work to the regular? If we gonna have them both at both meetings, should it be the very same person does both, which is very hard to do? Or 
the experience the one gets at the regular, will they also get the experience of seeing a work session one later? I think that work session is the one I would say is most important. Um, if others of, because that's where the discussion happens. And that's where I talk to uh, trustees around. That's where the discussion and, um, and decisions are made. And um, I would go with the work, not the regular, but because, uh, because uh, Trustee Mate, Tomato, uh, Pineda, are you saying that the regular is a different board member than the one who was at the work session during the very same month? I don't yeah. know, if they, get, they don't get the same experience. Yeah, that was my initial thought, but as you talk it through, it makes a lot of sense what you're saying. Um, I think part of it also was um, maybe like looking looking forward was the thought process. But, you know, I think you're absolutely right, Dr. Iris. I think it would make a lot more sense to just clarify it and make it work session meeting specifically. Because that you're right, that's going to be the one that drives the agenda, right? Yeah. And I think when we wrote this the first time, we weren't sticking to that model as closely as we are now. We were doing more of the model of the work sessions, one set of things, and it's it's preparation for the public session, but then there would be other things that would come in on the public session meeting. So I think that's where this came from. But yeah, I think we should change it. Trustee Maris, did you have any additional thoughts? Um, just that I, 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 I would I would prefer if um, just because of, I guess, my own experiences prior to being um, in, in board leadership that that a board member attend each one um, and that they rotate. So that that's kind of where I'm at. But I understand the opinions of everyone. And I guess, you know, we just have to vote on what we're going to recommend as a group and then and then move forward. I mean, we could we could invite them to both the same person to both meetings during the month, and if they can't make the second meeting, that's fine. I mean, that's another. Well, for me, third way to do it. Well, for me, the okay. So the first okay. So the work session agenda will be planned by rotating trustee one. When we're going to have a meeting that next Tuesday, so rotating trustee two has saw all of those agenda items at the meeting. So he or she is, or they are privy to the information. It's not like they're not privy to it. And then rotating trustee two, when they attend the planning meeting for the, for the larger uh, regular meeting, they can follow up with any individual questions they may have or concerns, as well as be involved in the new agenda items, because there's always new items <laughs> that pop up on the regular meeting. But so that's kind of my purview point of view, but um, I, I don't know about, listen, it could be a very busy month where we have committee meetings and this and that. Does trustee one want to go to both meetings as well? They can. I don't know. That's why I asked you and trustee Pineda, because perhaps um, you guys don't, if you have a bunch of other committee meetings that, that month. So thinking about the, the, one of the purposes of this is, is training, training for leadership. Um, it probably is more natural. I mean, if, if the leaders meet at the work session, bulk, talk through the, the bulk of the items and then do that follow up bing, bing, bing meeting because you've already talked through the issues and, and it's just buttoning things up. I mean, it, it might be good for, for someone to see the normal workflow of a, in the month of a board president and a board vice president to see how that goes and see what new things might pop up. Um, I, I hear, I think what you're, what you mentioned earlier and what you didn't state now is you also want to get more people rotated in as much as possible if if if, if possible uh, if they're able to attend um i think i think the more I, yeah i think the more i think about it i think the the work session is the priority mm -hmm. um and then we can Obviously, if that individual is still available for the public uh, meeting planning as well, then they're free to join that one as well. Um, because the other thing is, it, it would be it would be great if they, to, to your point, Trustee Val, if they see the whole process, right? Mm -hmm. In one specific example, they're not lost. The The only reason I think, as, as we're talking through this, that it makes sense to keep it as the same person instead of switching it, is that even if 
that second participant at the at the public meeting planning uh, session uh, is privy to all the information and knows what's going on, they can't really add things to the agenda at that point because the agenda is set. So they're kind of, it's almost like they're locked in. So I'm kind of wondering what the, the cost benefit is for them, right? Um, so I think it would make more sense if, in, in my mind, at least, if that same person is the one that attends both meetings that month, uh, if they're if they're available, obviously the work session be the work session planning meeting being the the priority. Tracy, are you comfortable with that, or did you have any additional thoughts? I'm sorry, no, 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 I'm comfortable. I mean, I I know we don't we we haven't figured out the magical way yet <laughs> to really not add things on at the and and that's everybody. That's the you know, the, the board members, the administration, we're hiring, you know, every other week, you know, you have to hire or, um, or uh, you know, whatever, we have to move uh, personnel. So, so things are always coming on the agenda. So I guess we haven't figured out that way to really do what we're saying, which is work session, do all, it's every two weeks is a, it's a new agenda. Um, not new, not brand new, obviously, we see most of the items from the work session on the regular, but, but we're having presentations, we're having um, comments at the work session now. Um, I don't know. I mean, no, we just had a presentation at the regular meeting. I'm, I'm saying that backwards. So we're having presentation at the regular meeting that may be where a board trustee wants to say something about the presentation ahead of time. So I, I'm still in my same place. <laughs> I believe we should have two different people at both meetings. Um, but but again, I will defer to the majority on that. Okay, then I guess we'll recommend to the full board that we'd like to include one additional member at work session and regular session agenda planning meetings, ideally, preferably the same person each month or the same person during the same month. Yes. I agree with that. Okay, thank you. In the interest of time, um, I'd like to abbreviate this agenda and cover one additional thing besides any new business you guys wanna bring up. And that is same section, item section six, item B. So I think we addressed it a little bit earlier. Um, I get item? Uh, yes. Before we leave the meetings, I wanted to clarify mm -hmm. that we are doing, um, we or the board had agreed that we should, that I should and Dr. Iverson have weekly leadership meetings, excuse me, and trustee um, Dragic. So I, I don't know if that paragraph that we were just at should clarify that or should we leave it unclarified for future boards as well? Can I search in here? Oh. So I, I, would you define, I would define the leadership meetings are these meetings prior to board meetings. In the weeks when we're not having board meetings, what will be the purpose of leadership meetings? So that's what we did talk about as the board when we were talking about communication in, or was it this week's meeting? Was it the meeting prior? We're two meetings back. I need someone to help remind me. But we did talk about that. And it was my understanding that the board wanted it weekly. But I mean, I, I, I defer to everyone else. Yeah, that, that's my recollection. And I think, I, think, I think it was around the fact that there's enough things going on right now. There's enough you know, changes. And we're setting all this up brand new that it made sense to have that, have that weekly touch point to make sure that we're as closely aligned as possible so that Dr. Iverson, whatever initiatives you're working on, we're supporting them appropriately and vice versa to make sure we were in, in step. So I, I think that's why we the, the outcome of that conversation was weekly. Not sure if anybody would call something different, but that, that's what I remember. I remember discussing it, I don't, I don't remember if there was a final decision. So I'm, I can't add more to that. So that leads me to ask, should we make a final decision? What do you guys, what's your pleasure? 
if we haven't made a final decision, then I would absolutely recommend that we establish a final decision for clarity. What, what I wouldn't want is that there's inconsistency because we are not clear on what's supposed to be followed and then it just leads to confusion. So I, I would definitely like to have some clarity there if, if, we, if we don't have it already. Dr. Iverson? I mean, I would like, yeah, that'd be great to have some clarity around that uh, so that I'll just know what the, what, I, I hear what you're saying, Trustee Pineda, and I, I can I can see some validity in that. I do, and, and the purpose of the, so those leadership meetings that are just weekly, are, are they just with the president and the vice president or, and a roving, a rotating person? Are they just, that's my, what are those meetings structured for? If it's around just keeping touch on top of things, is it just with the board president and vice president? Uh, the agenda piece, I, this language here is strictly about the agenda. The off weeks, because I have many calls and meetings with, uh, and with trustee mayors, you know, throughout the day um, around some of the things we would probably be discussed at a weekly leadership meeting. I mean, I, I think I talk to trustee mayors almost every day, if not every three or four times a week. So, uh, and some of those calls are about, can be an hour. Um, and, so, and that's not, that's okay. So I'm trying to get, be clear on the, A, the number of meetings and the purpose of all the meetings when I do a lot of that ongoingly now. That, that's a great point, Dr. Irison. In my mind, um, the agenda paragraph we just talked about is exactly as you said, it's just covering the agenda. And that additional board member rotating it is, in my mind, for the agenda setting purpose. In my mind, it's not for the standing leadership meeting. Um, I think the other purpose of that leadership meeting, though, is to, to your point, you're, um, you know, you lockstep with trustee mayors. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the vice president is lockstep. Uh, so I, I guess in my mind is, you know, if, if something should happen to any president, it would be great if the vice president is as closely aligned as possible. Obviously, they can't be on every single phone call. That's impossible. But that's where I think the weekly leadership meeting where agendas are not being set kind of kicks in, where there's some continuity there. I also think... Um... And I, and I do get to talk to Dr. Iverson a lot, which is great. But I also think it does help, right, to have the vice president there, but also to formalize some of the conversation so that it's like um, just organize and formalize. I feel like, you know, because I talk to Dr. Iverson a lot, it's usually um, informal. It's usually if I have a question or issue or if Dr. Iverson wants to update me on something, it's not necessarily like a formalized weekly discussion. And I think that is important to kind of um, touch base and improve communications, um, definitely as well with the vice president there. Um, the current vice president, Trustee Drogic, might have some, some input or inquiry that I didn't think to ask or question. Um, she may have some pulse on something that she needs to fill us in on as well. So, um, so I do think about more of a formalized uh, hour or whatever. And, and I agree, Trustee Pineda, there's a difference between like the leadership meeting versus an agenda setting meeting for sure. I, I just chime in that I do agree that the, the third board member does not need to be at these weekly meetings if, if it's agreed that those will happen. Um, I think that's training that would happen later once they're in a role. Mm -hmm. um, so as far as the purpose of the meeting, Dr. Arvison, you mentioned earlier, you, you wanted clarity on the number and purpose of these additional meetings. Mm -hmm. Trustee Maris has mentioned uh, improving communication and touching base in a more formal manner and, and mm -hmm. Trustee Pineda mentioned um, including the vice president so that there's some continuity in the conversations and, and, and alignment of, of the board's understanding of issues. If I'm not misstating you, Mr. Pineda. Um, 
It, yes, I'm, go ahead. I'm clear on that. Uh, a lot of what we discuss are repeated at leadership meetings, but I can I do see the validity and uh, and I do enjoy the meetings with uh, Trustee Maris and Trustee Adrajic when we talk. Um, when they're not board related, just leadership meetings, updates, and that sort of thing. And I'm just bringing them up to date on several of those things. It's just a lot of that I've I usually have already discussed. And so a, a, a form we can formalize it, but a lot of it is is a lot of redundancy. Vis-a-vis -vis the phone calls that you have with, with mm -hmm. Mayors? I mean, it's okay. I'm, we're just working it through now. I know Michael's trustee Drogic's not there. So I get that. And so yeah, she gets to hear true. all of that. And she gets, so I not for, so it's, it's uh, you know, it's just a lot of uh, redundancy around what we discussed maybe an hour already. And so I don't mind doing that. Of course not. But I just want to, since we're working out this process, as you know, just want to have a very clear purpose for meeting. I don't, I'm available, but I've, but just, just not to meet when I, I've spent a lot of time during the day doing the very thing we're meeting about sometimes at night. So a, a question on that, um, and I'm looking for input here because obviously I'm not in those meetings. Mm -hmm. So um, would it make sense if we, we kept those meetings the way we just stated, um, would that help? cut down on the frequency of touch points throughout the week, or do we still require, would, would you, I would would you and yeah, trustee yeah. mayor still need that frequency of touch points? Cause maybe that's a good way to, you know, Dr. Iverson to your point to not have so much redundancy, but still have it. To, I mean, it's a critical thing to do. So maybe that would help touch that, uh, cut down on some of those touch points and just kind of do them at the meeting. You're reading my mind, Trustee Pineda. <laughs> but also, I would say I would add to that also any inquiries on the agenda item. Uh, excuse me, on the weekly. You know, we get weekly packets, and then sometimes I hear from trustees during the week or the weekend after the packet with questions, or they're not really sure about that. Trustees inevitably have to either send in another question through email or wait to a board meeting when those. Um, leadership weekly meetings can be a place where we can just get some verbal clarity and then I can or trustee Dragic can report back to the full board or even that board member that needed clarity too so that can cut down on some of the emailed questions as well as stuff that comes up in exact session um but I don't know how everyone feels I am fully interested in cutting down our meeting time. So if this helps shorten uh, exec sessions, if, if some of those questions are answered in between, that would be great. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I mean, maybe, maybe this is, um, this would be a good opportunity maybe Tracy to talk to trustee Drogic to get her feedback or even the full board just to see, um, or maybe this is what we continue discussing at the retreat as far as our communications. And maybe this would be a protocol we consider setting up as far as these weekly leadership meetings. I'm not sure. I think it's a good idea. Uh, I we can continue. I mean, I think about the many ways we're trying to work on communication and and keeping you informed and, and the board get the information. Uh, we have the weekly update, as Trustee Ferris just mentioned, where if there are questions from the board that come during the week, they, we try to address them in the weekly update. So that's one way. If there are questions as that are follow up questions to the weekly update. I get what Trustee Mayors is saying. That is something then that she would have a conversation with me. And maybe that's what will be at that leadership meeting. Or, but right now, if that is happening, I she and I have conversations uh, throughout the week, or throughout the day on any on anything. Um, it, it could be uh, a, a call from a parent, uh, a, a, a thought she has. I mean, it's okay. Uh, so, so that that's communication that then I know she gets to the board. So we have the weekly update. You have the monthly schedule, 
of things that you want from the administrators that we submit to you monthly. That whole schedule that was developed last year, uh, each month what we had to send. So we're so that comes home. Um, then, so when we get to the leadership meetings, uh, we know the tool for the agenda. I'm talking to trustee mayors all throughout the day and through the week. So when we get to another two more meetings during the month, what else are we communicating about that we use? It's just a lot of, and I don't mind, it's a lot of meetings. And I, I don't know, the more meetings we structure, the more we'll probably find to talk about. I think we have a lot of structures and ways in, in place now that we meet and, and we communicate. Um, Dr. Iverson, you reminded me to um, ask uh, Chairman, uh, Chairwoman um, Valen to please make a note of the monthly schedules. Thank you for saying that, um, yeah. Dr. Iverson, because I do think that in the Governance Committee, we should be reviewing <clears throat> those requests that we, uh, that full calendar of requests for administration, because maybe we don't need all that stuff, um, or maybe it can be consolidated in a different way. Um, so if we can try to look at that, that might be helpful um, as well. Yes, that's actually, we're tabling it, but that's actually, uh, yes, it's on the agenda. Um, oh, just, good, thank just, you. just to finish up that, um, what, what you were just saying, I, I guess as, as a, as a non-leadership board member, I am interested in having um, my leadership team have weekly meetings so that I know there's a consistent, so that there's consistent communication and I know there'll be definitely be an opportunity to have something raised or get some clarification and not rely on a sporadic phone call, even though they apparently occur very often. Um, I'm kind of going to, and as far as Tracy, you mentioned getting clarification and getting that response back to the individual board member. I, I'm just going to repeat what, what I've said in the past and what I'm hearing in my training. All board members should know everything and what we know should be shared with everyone else. So I, 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 I just want to reiterate that the communications that are happening, apart from probably some specific things, that flow should go back and forth between everybody and not specific individuals is, is my request. And, and having these weekly leadership meetings and having the board president and the vice president there, for me as a, as a board member is a, is a fail safe way that I know that communication is happening. I know there's two people hearing the story. So if one person forgets one, we, we know it's gonna get communicated to the full group. Um, so I guess that's, that's my summary comments on weekly leadership. Um, I, I don't know if we're tying this up now. Um, well, I would, I would recommend if we wanted to tie it up, I would recommend that we get the full board's input. So what we could do uh, if we have an idea of how we want to go with this, we can make a recommendation to the board uh, and see if the board wants to approve it. Or if we want to think about it some more and come back to it during our next meeting, we can do that as well. I think we definitely need to get everyone's feedback because it's, it's important. There's only three of us board members and maybe people feel differently. And I think everyone needs to hear the, the concern about the increased meetings and maybe you never know, another board member might have a different option that might be more helpful too. So is this something that would fall under communication at the retreat or is this a discussion at a board meeting? Please educate me on how this would be presented to the full board. It can go either way. It can, it can be, uh, it could be a recommendation if we feel that we're in alignment here. It could be a recommendation to the board and requesting approval. It can be a topic for agenda discussion during a, a future meeting, or it can be handled in a retreat. I mean, any one of those are viable. Um, it really depends on urgency and timing and, and agenda, right? Because if we have an agenda that's jam-packed already, we probably don't want to add this to it. If right, there's right. some room on that agenda, why not? So it's preference. Well, since we're going to be discussing protocols, this is sort of a protocol. Maybe that's something 
that can be added in terms of the protocol for what is the protocol for when um, on how meetings and how often they should be conducted and what type. Uh, I'm thinking that we may be able to address it there as just one of those scenarios. Because what he's planning to do is to where he left off, uh, kind of go through some of those protocols for scenarios that we didn't get to uh, um, in terms of the communication piece between superintendent and board of trustees. So this kind of fits right in there. And so we can just all be, be in clarity about that. And so everyone can weigh in on just what that, what that should look like so that we're more effective and spending our time more effectively. Uh, I can totally get behind that. I agree, Tracy. Are you okay with discussing this at the retreat? Yes, I am. I, I actually like the retreat because I think too, um, we could also come up with specific examples. I do have to give a yeah. call to Dr. Coles too to um, just let him know I got so much feedback from board members. They really want to discuss specific examples um, of things that they would like to get clarity on and or work on as a board. And so in order to do that, uh, we would have to be more in exec session. So I definitely would agree. Okay. Okay, so we'll discuss this at the retreat. It is 8.01. We will never finish the long agenda. <laughs> um, do I hear any motions that might come out of thin air to table the rest of the agenda and continue at a future meeting? Or is there any new business or any of the topics on the agenda that you would like to cover before adjournment? The only, the only uh, suggestion I would make is for these additional items that we're talking about right now that weren't necessarily um, highlighted to the rest of the board, mm -hmm. such as the discussion with Dr. Coles about, hey, what do we, what, what's your recommendation for board goals or strategic goals, all these little things that we just covered now, mm -hmm. uh, I, would, I would suggest that we put those and circulate them to the whole uh, board membership uh, just to kind of mull over a little bit in, the, in their minds. That way, when they get to the retreat, it's not a, hey, this is the first time I'm hearing this. Everyone's had a little bit of time to structure it because we added a few more topics now to the retreat. We're trying to keep ourselves to a reasonable time frame. So I think it'd be great if everybody can start having like an understanding of at least what we're talking about. Um, I think it'll help must be more efficient. That'd be my suggestion. Would it be helpful if I summarize what I think we've discussed and emailed it to our group of four to see if I've forgotten anything before uh, perhaps President Mayor shares it with the full board? I think it would be. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and I don't see these as new topics for the retreat. This all does kind of fall under communication and protocol. So hopefully it's just fleshing out more of the discussion that we were already going to have. Um, does any, so I'm proposing that we. So I, I like the idea that in the meeting, I, I just want to remind us, encourage us to really look at that, those schedules of information requests. Every month the board has specific information requests on um, Dr. Iverson also made, you know, one of the things monthly are reports, um, but then there's also things that are not monthly that maybe once a year or twice a year. And I really hope that we can dedicate some time um, to look at those and really decide if we need all of them, if we need some of them, you know, how helpful they are, et cetera. We'll make that the main focus of our next meeting. And I will... I know I've seen some things missing on that calendar. So before the next meeting, I'll, I'll try to fill in some of the holes I've seen. Um, so we'll make that our, our primary topic. A few of these things I can touch base with. Um, as far as the, the discussion we had last time about um, changes to public comments, I'll touch base offline because I'm not sure what our next step is to formalize that. I was told that we could just enact things without um, changing the policy per se. 
Um, so depending on the feedback I get, we'll include that next time or not. Is the, I'm assuming everyone's agreeing that we will end the meeting now. No one's moved, so I'm going to keep talking. I, I, mo I motion that we end the meeting now. <laughs> Table what's left on the agenda. And we'll resume it during our next meeting. I second. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> Aye. Opposed? <laughs> okay. Don't oppose. All right. <laughs> All right. Meeting is adjourned at 8.05. I will type up that information and send it to you, hopefully, before I leave town Saturday. Thank okay. you guys so much. Happy Thanksgiving if I don't speak Thank to you guys. Yeah, good meeting. Good meeting. Thanks. Thank you. Same to you. Bye. Take care, everyone. Good night. You too. Take care. Bye. Bye.